One of the things about hot riding is that a lot of it is monkey see, monkey do. Guys will make modifications to their cars without actually thinking the whole process through. Like, why was it done a certain way to begin with? And the perfect example of that is frame connectors. Right away, the first instinct when somebody's building up a, a unibody car is to tie the frame rails together. And if you've ever driven a car before and after, you know, before frame connectors and after frame connectors, you can really feel the difference. The car gets, it feels much tighter, much more, you know, solid and stable, right? All the things you want the car to feel like, right? But that's not necessarily a good thing. There's a reason why the factory didn't tie those frame rails together. Now think about this for a second, right? You had the greatest engineering minds in the world, you know, building these cars, high performance versions of them, you know, Hemi cars and, and, and all of this, factory race cars, factory super stock cars, and never once did they tie the frame rails together. Why? The reason has to do with the unibody construction of the car. Well, actually, the method in which the panels are held together on these cars. A unibody car is, is connected, it's just a bunch of stamped panels connected together with thousands of tiny little spot welds. And in order to keep those welds from work hardening, right, flex is built into the car. So there has to be some give, you know. Uh, it, it could be like, like up to like a half inch, three quarters of an inch from one end to the other as you're driving down the road. And that's why a unibody car feels kind of cheap. Um, full frame cars, what they, they, their bodies are also you know, spot welded together, but they use body bushings between the chassis and the body, and that's where that give is, is you know, built into. So at any rate, what happens is here, come over here. So this is, this is the back quarter right, of the same car, uh, that duster. And here's the back frame rail, and here's where the leaf spring mounts and the axle would be here, and here's where the frame rail ends. On a unibody car, the rear frame rail ends here, but it's tied to the rocker here, right? Now on high performance cars, factory race cars, instead of adding that piece of metal from this frame rail to the torsion bar cross member, they box this area in. They use what they call the torque box. And so it basically it's backing this up and making this section stronger. And then they did the same thing in the front. They never tied this together. They wanted this separation so that the car would be able to do this a little bit and not focus all of the forces behind and in front of. So basically what happens is when you tie up the center of the car like that, you're forcing 100% of the twist to be in a much tighter, smaller area. And it's more likely to work harden and pop those spot welds. And that's why the factory never used frame connectors. So here's my general rule of thumb with, with stuff like frame connectors. If it's a competition only car, if you're only gonna use it on a drag strip or you're only gonna street race it, uh, you're only going to road race it or auto cross it, then yeah, by all means, tie them together, get the car as tight as it can be. No problems. But if it's a road going car and it's something that you're going to, you know, you, you, you plan on holding on to and taking care of and, you know, you're going to make long trips with it or even daily commute or anything like that, don't do it because you want that flex. It has to have that flex for the, for the, the structural integrity of the entire car to stay intact. If you've got them in there, cut them out. They're really not doing you any good. That little bit of extra feel isn't worth the fatigue that you're putting on the front and rear quarter sections of the chassis. So anyway, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.